Imagine this, you're Casey Neistat, filming your life, breaking YouTube, and now you've got an Olympic runner, Roberto Mange, by your side, telling you to run faster than you ever run before. The goal, sub three hours, the reality, you don't nail it overnight, but with Roberto's guidance, you break through the walls you didn't know existed, and you get closer than you ever thought possible. What you will learn in this episode, why understanding your why can be the secret sauce for showing up and pushing through tough training days, what Roberto Mange's experience at the 2004 Olympics can teach you about resilience, mindset, and coaching, and oh yeah, he ran with El Garouge, yes, the GOAT, when balancing physical training with mental preparation becomes crucial for long-term success, and a bunch more. Welcome to Conversation in Zone 2, where we, the 1% better runner, who is me and a bunch of other people, go for a shakeout run before the Sydney Australia Marathon with Olympic runner and run coach slash race pacer, Roberto Mange. He's worked with pop musician Lil Nas X, Casey Neistat, and other awesome runners. Roberto's all about that 1% better life, proving that tiny gains can make a huge difference over time. Hey, buddy. How are you? Nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, how's it going? Good, 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 good. Has ran the Olympics, 2004 Athens, and we'll get into that in a second. Between all of that, has there been any like weird, funny questions or comments from from any of those famous runners that uh, that you coached? Good question. I, I would say, yeah, because it's maybe fresh in my mind. The most recent being Little Nuts X in March. He was uh, very new to racing. Mm -hmm. I believe that was his first race ever. So. There's a, a lot of first time moments on that run. On the hand bridge. We're at mile six. All right. Mile six and it was nothing. Yeah. Okay, it was a lot. <laughs> but we're here at mile six, almost halfway there. Yeah, almost. But he was like such a positive guy, so optimistic and really liked to have fun. So we had a really good time, but he was just very much like, wow, this is long. And like, <laughs> does everybody get a medal? And this is the 1% better rudder video podcast of sorts, and all about consistency habits, incremental improvements. Because I mean, that's honestly, that's the, that's the juice, that's the sauce. Yeah. That makes everything. It's boring, but it makes everything. What goals do you look for in implementing with like, say someone wants to work with you and have you coach them? Are there any specific like go-to habits that you, that you look to implement in people or is it, is it different across the board? Try to eliminate as many stresses as possible and frame it and say, hey, you're doing this because you want to do this. What is your why again? And once we get all that sorted, then yeah, we just start to sort out the training and okay, this is your goal. Let's work backwards from goal race day to today. How many weeks do we have or months? And what kind of training we're gonna do? I try to give them an overview so that way they could come and see the roadmap. But in order to not overwhelm them and say, hey, this is a giant pizza, but we're not have to eat it all in one sitting. We're gonna <laughs> chop it up in slices and have fun along the way. And that's kind of like the thing. And along that way, we just get a little bit better week over week, whether that's half a percentage or one percentage. You know, I let them know that like progress isn't gonna necessarily be linear. There isn't, there's no such thing as that ideal buildup. There might be good days, bad days, good weeks, bad weeks, but you're the sum of your training. Yeah. And again, framing it that way and coming back to your why helps kind of like reset things and then yeah, execute. So I'm gonna hop on the uh, 2004 Olympics, yeah. 1500. And I think you were gonna do a 3000 meter steeple, right? Yeah. And you got, you got injured in the race? Yes, uh, long story, hopefully not longer, long story short. Mm -hmm. It's the Olympics, my first time there. So I'm thinking we're gonna fly because it's the Olympics. Yeah. And didn't even think about how it would be tactical. And then having Hikam El Garouche in the race, he's the king of the, mar the mile and 1500, so everybody's just watching him. So anyway, I'm thinking we're gonna go on like 155, 156. And we went on like, I think like 204, oh, whoa. 206. Yeah. Which is a respectable time for an 800, but it's not. It's not up to scratch for that. So, you know, you have all these fit human beings just jostling, jostling. Anyway, at some point, he goes out the front and just smacks the pace. And when he did that, like, everybody's scrambling to, you know, bridge the gap. Yeah. And at some point, there, a French guy 
forget his name, and one of the American guys, I think like they bumped into each other, and I think one of them might have gone down. And anyway, I stepped on the, on the inside rail of the track, which is like maybe two inches high, like five centimeters high, and just popped my ankle. Oh! And I knew right then I was done. I mean, there's adrenaline and all that, but like... You kept running, you finished, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the Olympics. Like, <laughs> I gotta finish, it's not a marathon, but like, I knew I'm just watching them pull away. Yeah. And my ankle, like I'm losing feeling in my foot when I'm putting it down. Oh! And I was just gutted. So yeah, after that, I was like, the steeplechase, which is even tougher or more demanding on the joints. Yeah. I said, like, there's no way in hell I could come back. I think it was the next day. I got left there. And uh, yeah, and and run and jump and all that. So so yeah, I uh, I pulled out and yeah, I was gutted, but that's life. Yeah, that is life. You travel a lot. You help people, pace people, running the best times. Yeah via a mixture of virtual and in-person, which is awesome, yeah. uh, coaching. What one habit do you, is your staple that's your, that grounds you and keeps you, just like keeps the, what is it, the wheels on the track, or keeps the train on the track? Genetics loads the gun and lifestyle pulls the trigger. Ooh, so that's good. To kind of break that down, it's like, yeah, genetics. I, you said we have good genetics, we didn't choose our parents, right? So thanks mom and dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the lifestyle that we lead is what's gonna maximize our potential, mm -hmm. right? And how we lead it. So for me, there isn't just one thing, like I'm definitely inspired by others out there getting after it, but I'm most inspired by my kids. I want to set a good example for them in just about everything I do. So in the physical literacy or movement space, I just wanna say being able to move my body and use it as long as possible. And what that looks like today might be different than what it might have looked like 20 years ago or 20 years from now. But the thing is, I just want to be able to do sports and be active, whether that qualifies me as a hybrid athlete or a fitness coach or whatever. Those are all labels, but like the point is, I want to use my body and help other people use theirs and get the most out of their fitness and prolong their life as long as possible. And obviously in doing so, I inspire, motivate, and hopefully my kids, set a good example for them. And then obviously the people who I work with, hands on. So genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger, and I'm just trying to live that life. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time. Thanks for sharing miles with me as uh, Ron Romano, Romano told me yesterday. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank you for thank having you, me. You, man. All right. If you want to learn more about this topic, we went into further detail. You should go and check that out right here.